Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Here today we are actually going to be going over a Marcus player covering all of the Marcuses where he'll actually be trying out some of the new items on his frontline tank build. How are you doing today, Amir? I'm doing pretty good. I <laughs> I love seeing the re-edition of Solar System Miniature into the game as uh, it was one of my favorite Cobalt items. Um, I think during preseason but they sadly removed it and uh, it's re-entered its way without the active but it is a uh, it's a very nice item to see 600 health when you're max level i think 15 de 15 defense it's a it's a lot of stats which marcus does really like it is definitely the most tankiest arm piece in the entire game right now now i didn't actually know that where stellar came from i definitely did not play during the time it was in the game or if it was exclusively just Cobalt, because I didn't play any Cobalts when it was in the game. Yeah, it was a Cobalt exclusive item. Uh, it had a very funny active where it would start opening up this zone around you. And after a bit, it would pull everyone in uh, right on top of you. So there were funny characters like Kian Wu where you'd use it and then you'd charge your ult. And by the time they all land in the center on top of you, your ult's fully charged and... Uh, <laughs> It it didn't look too pretty for your opponents, but uh, it made some really funny clips. Well, that sounds kind of fun, fair, and balanced, if you ask me. That sounds that sounds pretty good. I don't know why we uh, we wouldn't keep such a passive on the <laughs> item now in the main game. Yeah. But, but let's uh, uh, let's go over the abilities here for Marcus. For anyone that doesn't know how Marcus works, we'll go over that real quick here. For his passive, he's got Warrior's Grit. So this is broken down into two abilities. Uh, first is rattled so enemies that are knocked into walls become stunned and take extra damage this is your rattled and then there's fatal blow so after they've been rattled uh when you auto a rattled enemy they'll you'll deal additional damage and for his first ability art of war this increases his movement speed and attack speed for three auto attacks dealing additional damage and recovers hp based on the damage that he deals then for his W, Violent Swing, he knocks enemies airborne in a frontal cone. Uh, for his third skill, Fearless Assault, it charges forward, knocking a target back. And this can knock over walls. Lastly is his ultimate, Smash the Smithereens. This makes it so that Marcus jumps to, uh, forward, dealing damage, slowing and reducing defense on the, of the target's hit. And if you hit a target with your Violent Swing, you flip the target backwards, applying your rattled passive. So, seems like a lot, but the kit's really, really straightforward. It's kind of dash in, smack people. <laughs> Marcus is a character that I used to love for the exact reason of turn brain off, press Q, hit people into walls, and start benefiting. For sure. I think his highest skill expression really is his E and ultimate, right? By doing that dash, making sure that you slam people into walls to get your passive proc and stunning them. And then also being able to properly flip targets into your team. Yeah, I know a lot of players are very, are very annoyed when they see their Marcus do it off repeat. Go in, alt, flip someone into your team. Maybe they flip a Jackie into your team. Not the best target. Um, doing things like that, but... Once you're able to get it down, always start looking at the right targets um, and actually start anking the right abilities as Marcus generally isn't a full-blown damage dealer. He's kind of there to frontline, drain tank, yeah, and, and one GC thing, disrupt. Yeah, and one thing I really like about Marcus, though, specifically, uh, like you were talking about with that ultimate there, is there's two different types of Marcuses. And this is sort of on your range carry as well. So obviously make sure you're keeping aware of your range carry so that this doesn't happen. But a lot of it does happen towards your range carry where you get a good ultimate and you flip people back. You either have the range carry that's directly behind you and you've now flipped three people on top of them and they're going to die. Or you have a good range carry that knows that the Marcus is probably looking for that flip, flips them back, and they are now in the right range that they're now going to just kill whoever you just flip back so i'm hoping to see in this game marcus flip someone back celine be in the range where she's going to throw all of her bombs at the spot that she knows marcus is going to flip and instant kill someone yeah i think a flip into a four bomb if i'm if i have to fight that 
Um, we we might not be playing for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, definitely a very scary combo if they're playing coordinated enough to do it. Yeah, but with this being solo queue, it's uh, somewhat hard to coordinate a lot of these plays. Um, looking for, honestly, looking for that even in a pre-made comp is not very like. But I think we will be seeing a Guardian suit come out for uh, our Marcus oh. onto that chest slot. As I know Marcus is a, he's a very health reliant character as his Q damage and healing does scale off his bonus health. Which means that every every stat that goes into his health is not only stat for defense, but is also offensive stats. Yeah, which lets him build that extra tankiness. Plus, also being a great frontline for his team here, he's gonna be able to just kind of go in, soak so much damage, especially with this early suit, and then be able to help his uh, his team create a bunch of space to be able to do the damage they need to do. Especially because like a character like Celine. She's going to be able to carry a lot of the damage uh, for the team. And Hun Wu going to just have to look for those angles. Right now, not looking at the right angle, getting kind of flipped back, though. Yeah, we do see an ult forward, though. It doesn't actually connect the flip back, but we're able to see the uh, Selene was able to knock back the Lennox. Trying to knock her back even further. We're just taking so much damage. Luckily, our Guardian suit giving us that damage reduction. Able to survive the Haze throwing all of her rockets in our face, the enemy Selene bombing us 24-7, and uh, sadly our Selene is get actually getting knocked back. We're going to go forward, knock up the Lennox. I think we're able to just pick up the Lennox reset, maybe? Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the case. And I mean, again, just so tanky. He created so much space there, and yeah, he didn't land the flip back, but he still got the knock up and then sent the Lennox back into his team, and she had the defense shred from the ultimate making her a lot more acceptable to taking damage, letting them take that easy trade, even though they had two range versus the one range that, uh, from Marcus's team. Yeah, and a big thing is that he was doing all of this while Hyun Woo was trying to heal up after the uh, sadly missed engage from, uh, <laughs> from him, but it allowed his Hyun Woo to get basically back to full health. His Selene was able to start to look for counter, uh, counter trades with her Qs and... Uh, Throwing all of those four bombs onto the Lennox. He was able basically just able to play in this sweet spot where he's able to stay forward, but also has the ability to run back. And it's a lot of it's where you want to play for a lot of these uh frontline carry or frontline tanks that don't want to don't want to sit in front but also don't want to stay behind. Look for some of these possibilities to start weaving in these cues get that health and then back up reset and uh once you have your abilities back up do it all over again exactly no for sure especially in like a fight like that where it's 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 basically range versus range and you're kind of just trading damage on the other tank it's really impressive to see marcus be able to win that battle against lennox where lennox is a really more iconic tank than marcus right now especially in na being very very tanky and really good peel plus they had two backline range wailing onto marcus and marcus still won that trade he he had to back out but at the end of the day his team was able to still dish just as much damage to lennox as he took from two characters yeah and i actually wonder how often sorry yeah how often he is uh going for this exact build where he goes guardian suit and then right after that goes for his barrier two as barrier two does scale off of this bonus health that he's getting from this guardian suit so the synergy there is very good and we actually do see he knew that the laura was coming in so i think he was trying to bring a trap tries to go for the alt doesn't connect sadly but now he's going to walk away queuing and uh, auto attacking this kenneth to make sure that he can get keep getting this bonus health using axe skill as well to be healing it's using a lot of these um these small opportunities to get this health, making sure he's topped up as unlike other tanks, Marcus doesn't just have damage reduction built into his kit. He kind of has to weave it in on his own by healing up and reducing the amount of health that uh, he's really losing. Yeah, and also with a, a very important thing to think about when you're thinking about playing with a tank here, especially playing a character like Marcus, is a lot of times your HP pool is a resource. 
he doesn't care how low his health is as long as he's still alive and he's he's burnt resources from the enemy team he is more than happy to go as low as he needs to again he burned so much of Aya's resources he burnt all of Kenneth's resources and he gave Celine the freest time in the world just blowing up that team. I mean, heck, we even saw that Kenneth there. He just gave up. He was done. He was like, you know what? I just end the game, please. Like, no, I, I can't beat you guys. Yeah, and it's actually a very weird... I didn't even realize it until now. Um, the synergy between Hyunwoo Marcus, where Hyunwoo knocks someone into a wall. Right after that, Marcus knocks them into a wall. And now you're just wall stunned for, like five seconds because after that you're basically like your keyboard's unplugged <laughs> you're not playing the game anymore exactly and, and it doesn't matter which one does it they can just kind of chain it so yeah it's, it's really really interesting though i think i think this is going to be a really good game for us to look at and more analyze tank orientation more than anything uh this Marcus is, isn't playing to be the carry of the team this is definitely not someone that's trying to instantly win the fight on his own he's trying to basically force the enemy team to try and 1v1 oh sorry 1v3 him burn all the resources to try and take him down and then he's going to try and leave the fight right at the last second and let his team clean up the plays yeah for a tank a lot of their somewhat skill i think their skill expression is usually put into how well they're able to utilize their health as you did say earlier it's a resource as long as you don't have zero health, you can still be using it to try and manipulate the way that your opponents are going to play. If you're low on health, you can start trying to go forward, make them think that they can kill you, weave out, dodge all of the abilities coming at you. And then if you're higher on health, you know, maybe go forward, put the pressure on your opponents, as we saw him doing earlier. And then as he got low, hit Q, start auto attacking, try and heal up and, uh, and keep making your way out. So that your your teammates, sorry, can uh, start weaving in some of their abilities, some of their auto attacks, and returning the favor with damage. Oh, exactly. No, for sure. And I think I think that's really really important because yeah, exhausting the enemy team's tools on you when you have three point one k HP on link three is definitely massive. Three point one k HP, one seventy armor after you get some healing as he is running i think it's emboldened um and with marcus having healing on q healing on his axe skill it's very easy to proc that and you're usually procking it once you enter the fight so getting a lot of this burst in defense for when a lot of people decide that uh i'm gonna throw out my big ability start of the fight it's it's very nice for sure and i think i think it's gonna be really important to keep in mind too i think We'll probably end up seeing this Marcus engage quite a bit of ways from his team, where his team's not necessarily immediately there to follow up for two reasons. One, like we've been talking about, he's just, it's going to make him a really easy target because they're only going to see him burn all the resources, try and kill the Marcus. The Marcus doesn't die because he's super tanky. But then the second half of this is that if he lands a good flip back, his team after the flip back should be in the perfect range to be able to initiate and start the fight from that distance. Whereas they're not directly behind the Marcus. They're not going to have them on top of them. They're going to be just in the range now just to start the fight, which I think will really help enable his team if he lands that. And then if he doesn't, then, you know, it's okay. They'll catch up as they're trying to now finish and chase the, the Marcus off. Yeah, and we actually will be seeing the solar system miniature come out right now. It, I don't think that he was uh, planning on building it. As he has the shield in his inventory, I assume that's for the myth shield. But he got a free meteorite. His team doesn't know what to do with it. He's just going to grab the tree, go force score, get this item online, get a bunch of health. And we do see a fight start up here. The heart on the side of the fight, auto attacking for free. That is such a fat shield coming out though. Alting putting so much pressure on the heart, she has to back out. And now he's just trying to play his health, running around basically, making sure his opponents know that he's alive. And I think he's realized there isn't really any way for his team to play the rest of this fight out. They have the credits, they can just go back, revive, it's all fine. As long as you guys aren't all three wipe, you're still in the game, there is no reason mm -hmm. to give up yet. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, a little bit of an unfortunate fight. It looks like he, I mean, he really, really, really tried to 
catch the heart, didn't get the angle, didn't have the tools to peel the Selene. So Opta just, you know what, let's take the minus 500. It's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back after. But it's crazy though. I mean, he's got 3.7k HP. That force field shield is massive. Makes him so tanky. Yeah, it was a bit of an awkward one where the carry is actually on the other side of the fight as uh, the two somewhat frontliners are actually in the building. And you were, you're not able to pick, do I want to go and deny the Piolo? Or do I want to go and try and pick off the, this heart? He picks the heart, the heart's able to dash out, and then now the Piolo and the Marcus are able to walk out for free. Start yeah. putting pressure on your carry, and I, it becomes a very awkward fight from there. I think he had to try and make the two melee carries, try and uh, 2v1 him. I think he had to go full send into them, try and force them to fight him, and then hopefully his team can beat the heart in the 2v1. Yeah, but we do see he walked through the building. I think they were looking to pinch whoever was doing Wick. But uh, yeah, the fight was already going on basically over. They're able to get Wick for free now. And I wonder if they actually are able to catch this. Sadly, Laura has a lot of mobility being able to just W out of the, or out of the alt itself. And Hyunwoo's, actually, sorry, not Hyunwoo. Our Celine is going to be chasing this, trying to make sure that Laura has no way to get back into the game. Yeah, I mean, Laura's just dead now. There's no way out. Celine has officially won. And what is she buying? Let's... Oh, she bought it back oh. her team. Wait, this this is a play. Um, our Laura is going to go down, but now we're actually able to stay in the game. This Yon is sadly going to get caught out. I uh, maybe lied about staying in the game. <laughs> You know, but it was tried. a really, actually a really clever attempt. If there was an award there, he definitely gets away without them realizing. Yeah, because we know as the Laura, we don't have the timer to actually stay in the game, but maybe one of our teammates does res them and hope that we can stay in, but Celine placed a ward. Our Marcus is able to just keep spamming these E's, and it's not really a long cooldown, especially when you're 25% CDR. I do think he's planning on going to 30, um, upgrading these boots. I'm not exactly sure to what, probably the Wild Walkers. Um, yeah, Wild Walkers make the most sense. It's got HP, got CDR. Yeah. We just want to keep stacking this HP. We don't really need too much attack power. And yeah, just getting any more defensive stats is going to be very beneficial as we do have a Selene. Let's keep peeling for her. Make sure our Hyunwu as well can keep doing stuff as he is building a bit more damage than I think we see a lot of Hyunwu's build. Oh, there it is. There's the tree. I wonder, uh, I wonder if he'll break... 4k he does he's at 4.1k hp that's crazy to think yeah even at 4.1k hp he has 222 uh, attack power as well he's not really slacking on attack power either that is a that is a oh. 1.8k <laughs> shield that is insane he what he he gets more shielding than a lot of characters have health at around their like level 15 mark yeah, that's, he, that's crazy. That's a lot. But yeah, we're going to catch out this Fiora. Looking for the flip. Lost oh. the kill. Unlucky. We're unable to pick up the kill. And we also can't pick up the flip as Hyunwoo just CC immunes it. And uh, the I'm, Fiora fell on the floor. I'm getting a flashback here of us chasing uh, a bruiser up oh. into this area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, it does look like... Oh, wait, we missed the E and uh, also missed the W, sadly. The Hyunwoo was able to just barely walk out of the corner and then counter with our own wall slam. But yeah, we're just too tanky. It's a solo Hyunwoo. We're not going to die. Yeah, I mean, we're at the point now. We're at the final stages. There's three teams left. We are going to just basically... Now, actually, only one team left as one team just rooted. We're basically probably just going to wait here. You could technically argue that you want to push with Lion into the other team and try and force the fight. The reason why you would opt to not want to do this as much as with Lion does give you an advantage is the fact that you don't have control of that other zone. You have control of this zone. So you know where everything is. You're not going to get surprised. You're not going to get jumped. If you go to a zone and you don't have information on, it's possible that that team could cheese you, could jump you. And they have that vision advantage, even with Wickline sometimes being jumped by surprise, doesn't guarantee that you will have a chance. 
Yeah, especially when you have to fight something like Kyolo, where, you know, that nunchuck skill from out of vision, as we're going to try and see him uh, throw it here, that nunchuck skill from out of vision does a lot of damage when it's fully charged, giving that stun. It It's a very scary ability, but I think... Oh, our Hyunwoo is actually going to look for a very big engage. We're just going to stay peeled back, put pressure on this heart now. We ulted forward. Unable to kind of connect anything? Our barrier is just insane. Cancelling Heart's ult with our E. And then now we're just going to stay on... Yeah, we're just going to stay on Piolo. Try and out-heal him. Keep CCing him. Yeah, a little unfortunate though. Kind of ended up uh, wasting the force field. But still, though, the perfect cancellation on Peacemaker. Really well played on that end. And that was a cleanup from the team there. I mean, again, not the most flashiest plays but definitely an interesting way to take a look at marcus and see you know how to create that space as a tank you don't necessarily always have to be the playmaker sometimes just creating that space taking the hits for your team is all that's really needed i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you in the next one